I had a question right from the start, one of the audience members, they wanted to understand this generalization of how do you read a code? How do you actually read the code? Well, I'm sending the code back into the animal's brain. So the, uh, the brain how do you get the reading. original code, I think, is the question. How do you, get how do you the, find the code? How do you that find the code? Yeah, part so of the you, we, take, we take normal animals, and we're presenting images, and we're recording from wherever the brain area is. And so in this case, we're recording from the retina's output cells. And we are, it's, we're sort of, it's basically a model of the retina. And so mathematically, we're just fitting parameters until we can find a reliable input-output relationship. And there's, there's, I can explain it in more, in more detail. Is that a probe? I mean, literally, you're putting a probe into the animal so that you're, you're monitoring the circuits, if you will, and, and reading those circuits at some point? Yes. Yeah, so I, I don't want to get too detailed. I, but right, I have the electrodes, a set of electrodes that are in the, in the animal, recording the output while I present an array of images. And, and the idea is to figure out a, a mathematical transformation that will generalize to all possible images. So people have played around this with very simple stimuli, like you can, uh, you know, unnatural images. But what's powerful about this is that it's, it's anything, you know, so. Right, so I had another person sort of asking, one of the audience members wanted to know, you know, is this two years, five years, 10 years in humans? I mean, what are we looking at here? Obviously, you know, the future is, shall we say, difficult to predict. But if you were looking out here, are we looking at something 10 years away before we start to see this kind of in, in the world today? Well, I think I'm, I mean, I'm hoping less. So we've done this. What I showed you is data in mice, you know, blind mice, and now we're doing it in um, next month, actually, in monkeys. So we ha already have the code worked out for, for monkeys. So it's the same for whatever for monkeys is going to match for humans, because we use this, a monkey that is very similar vision to humans. So once we get you know, a data set collected for that, we can start moving forward for clinical trials. So it's, it's really surprisingly soon. So, so we're I talking mean, a matter of a few yeah. years, right. hopefully. Uh, what are others doing in this field? We got a question from one Ted Metzger on this mind-machine interface. Um, obviously, there, this must be an exciting field, and there must be many others who are also working on similar things. Is there a sense of, of, of teamwork? Or is, are you learning from others who are working on this kind of thing, or are you by yourself on this one? Well, uh, people are taking sort of different strategies. So there's a lot of stuff that's done from taking, reading out the brain and going into, um, into a prosthetic. And, you know, John Donahue and, and um, Krishna Shinoy and, and Dean Kamen, of course, many others are, are really pioneered that. And, but this is sort of a different direction. And so we're a little on our, on our own. You sit on your own here. I mean, there are lots of people that help mathematically and people who do help with optogenetics. It, it's still a, a, a you know, Great. One, one last question. Software upgrades. Literally, the code, you can imagine upgrades here as your modeling and simulation gets better. My site could continue to improve as the software got better? Actually, can I show you one little? OK. okay. <laughs> <laughs> From Made by Ex Vivo. Um, it's, it shows what the device looks like. What it is is that it's, it's, um, what makes it also really different is there's no surgery involved. And so the patient gets in, injected with a, um, a vector that puts the transducer into his into his cells. That's it. One time, it can be done in a doctor's office. And then they wear glasses, and the glasses interact with, with the transducer that's in the eye. So we can improve the technology as, you know, so it, it, at first it's going to be wow. embarrassing, slightly big embarrassing glasses, although we're yeah, trying to right be now, a big problem. It's yeah. down. It's to the, <laughs> no, look, well, once, once the guy can see, you know, he looks in the yeah, mirror. Yeah, I think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we can improve it both, both technologically and fashionably. Um, without the patient having to go under I anything. think fashion's not going to be your issue. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank you so that much. That was really good.